How's things everybody? A Durbin from Lanford Town here. Go and subscribe to Irish Footy Vlogs for the best League of Ireland content. Olé, 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 olé. Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome to the First Division Playoffs semi-final first leg we're talking about today. Uh, Bray Wanderers taking on Galway at the Carlisle Grounds and Treaty taking on UCD at Markets Fields. We'll start off Keno with uh, Bray and Galway and uh, going into this game, Galway, obviously the form team, they're finished 14 points out of Bray. Bray lost their last three games. Um, Bray are missing a couple of players through suspension, Callum Thompson and Connor Clifford. There's a couple of players touch and go, apparently Brian Marr, believe it or not, and Gary Shaw with injury. Galway are fine, apart from the long-term injuries of Manning and Lambusha or Lamboto, but they've been missing for the whole season, so I suppose they don't really count. You would like to think, in many ways, there's only one winner here, but that's not the way football works, is it? No, it's, it's going to be a very tight game. Uh, Bray, will make it, Bray will make it tight, and I think Galway will sit in, and I think Galway will probably be happy with a point, well, not a point, it's, a, it's obviously a knockout, but I said they'd be happy with a, with a draw and take it back to 30 land. But, you know, it's going to be... Uh, I don't you don't know what to do, you know and I think in recent weeks we've probably seen Bray fall over the line <laughs> but they're in the playoffs that was their target they've achieved it and you know credit to them for that we've seen a similar last year with Longford who kind of fell over the line and now I know they're back down but they got themselves up you know and they, they won the playoff uh, they beat UCD dramatically uh, who else did they beat? They beat someone else, didn't they? Oh, my head is like a sieve here. I can't think now. Obviously, they beat Shelburne, but who was the other team to beat? Was, was it Cabot Was it, it Was it Galway no. to beat? Was it Galway to beat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So they beat Galway and then they went on and beat Shells. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, so these knockout games, it's you know, it's 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 different. It does a little bit of a there's a little does it something about them that. Like the farm kind of goes out the window. It's kind of like the cup. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm going to. I'm going to say it raw here. I just think I think Bray. I can't see Galway winning it on the night. Mm. Uh, whether they win it over the toys and other thing, or I I just think they won't win it on the night. So an edge for a draw, if not a Bray win, that's true. Yeah. I mean, that's the form guide, as I said, suggests Galway win. But then again, we've talked about Longford there last year and their experience coming through the playoffs. Uh, ironically, Bray were probably the the team that people would have fancied the most last year coming through the playoffs. But, um, you know, they have some players, Galway, that can hurt you. Uh, Keating has nine goals this season, Cunningham them a six. You know, they've got good players who can get goals. They've got Conor McCormick and Hurley in midfield. Uh, very strong players. Warawu has eight goals this season as well. Eventually learned his name as well. Uh, the South African but uh, yeah they've got players that can hurt Bray but I agree with Keane in many ways like I think Caulfield will go there and be very cautious because the way he is and he knows that it's two legs but um, from your point of view did Bray actually have to win the game though do you think before they go to Terryland did they need to win it? I think so you know when you have home advantage you need to try and capitalise on that you need to try and actually obviously get the win if, if you can when you're at home next time is going to be away from home and I think Galway in my opinion anyway have a lot more quality than Bray have obviously Bray have some really good players too but like you said there there's a few of them missing as well and I think Galway don't have that problem like you said the players of Galway don't have it to win it they haven't really had all seasons they're not going to be missed like and I just think Galway I think that could actually you know make a big difference for Galway the fact that they don't have any players missing but I think Bray definitely, if they want to try and go over these two legs, they should definitely try and get a win at home, and try and get a draw in Galway. But I'm sure Galway will be saying the same thing going into this. I try away to Bray and a win Galway. So, you know, it's the way it is. Like, you know, it's a it's cup finals for all, that, all these teams. Like, form does go out the window. Like, you know, you've got like, the top five teams go, go, can potentially go up in this division. So, like, you know, you have a mid table team playing against, you know, second place in the league. So, Better than normally happening on the early division, so there is a bit of a gulf in quality in a way when you look at it from that perspective. But you know, both teams have some really good players, so they'll have terrific seasons. And I think they'll both fancy their chances of going up, which will make it an even tighter game because I think both managers will be going to this cautious, they're not going to want to just you know really attack and be exposed to the back, potentially concede an early goal. And you know, that could be the amount of tight end if they do that. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the both will line up. But I think for myself, potentially, I think. 
Galway have got the better chance out of these two. I think this Galway just don't have this injury crisis that Bray seemed to be having all season. Like Shaw's been out a lot, a lot of times this season, but when he has played, he's been a very vital player for Ireland. I think a lot of players went through him and goals came through him. And I just think Galway have got more players to them and putting goals in all over the pitch. Whereas I don't think Bray has had that as much players as Galway doing that. So if you've got goals coming from different angles in the pitch all around it, I think you're going to have a better chance as well. Yeah, I think uh, finally on that key, I suppose Bray will need the likes of Brandon and Kavanagh to really perform as well, I think. And uh, there's no doubt that Caulfield will, will target him as well because he knows on his day he's very, very dangerous, isn't he? Yeah, he's very dangerous, but they have a couple of players that are very dangerous. And, you know, uh, Brandon probably hasn't hit the heights he probably planned to hit at, when he signed for Bray. Mm. Uh, he showed glimpses of his quality, for example, the first thing that shoots out at me is the goal against Shells. Mm. You know, just glimpses of quality he showed. And I don't think he's been consistent enough for the minor. He, he'd be wanting to put a statement down now. He's in the playoffs. He wanted to be getting Bray through. Uh, I think it's a Lewis Lewis for Bray, for crowning. Uh, you know, I think, to be honest with you, I don't think the fans are happy with him. Uh, I don't think everything's gone rosy there. And, you know, you're, he's in a position now where I think to be the brand manager next year, he kind of has to get them through the playoffs and into the Premier Division. And, you know, that, that's against all the odds complete. Uh, I don't even think uh, two decent results in the playoffs are probably going to do it justice. Uh, I do think he has to get up. I, I don't think that should be the case. I think he, I think he deserves another, like, where are all the obstacles he had to face this year? I do, I, I do see what he tries to do. I do see the football that he tries. He tries to play to the strengths. He tries to play nice, a nice brand of football. He's, he's always bringing through youths as well. So he's doing an awful lot of good things at Bray. I don't think it should be overlooked, you know. And I think a playoff position for Bray is probably the best that he could have got out of that side. I know last year, you know, they, they probably people will say they probably bottled it towards the end and, the, the, you know, in, in, in the big games when basically they needed one win to win the league and they didn't. And, you know, we could have been talking about Crown and probably going on to manage one of the top teams in the country at this minute in time, you know. So it, it's funny how things happen like that. But, you know, I, I just, I, I, I don't think he should be under any pressure. I think, uh, obviously, you don't want the club to come out and give you that dreaded vote of confidence because that means you're gone. Uh, but I, I think he needs to be reassured of his pl- position now, Bray, even behind closed doors. No one needs to know. And, you know, because I think he's doing some really good things. And, like, it's it's the old question. If he goes, like, do you, bring in, do you bring in a manager that has been in the league and we know all about him? I mean, know what he's about, or do we bring a manager, or do or do we go with Crown and, and play with him, give him the time to bring his new ideas to the table? Look, look what we've seen. We've seen so many young managers now in the league, and you know, I think it's it's brilliant to see, and it's 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 so exciting because you don't know who's coming, you don't know what's going to happen. You know, usually you get the old the usual circle of managers going around and. You know, like they're all, they manage everyone at one stage, but they kind of have the same players and they kind of have the same team with every different team, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, you know, it's not predictable like that anymore with the new with the new people coming in. I think look, you look the likes of Ian Ryan, what he's after doing at Wexford, who, you know, he'll be helping Eaton Group there. But I think Crowning is right up there with the best of them. Uh, I know, like, the just. Uh, the farms was probably haven't done them justice or done, done me justice to be saying this but you know I just think they play playoff position if they win win around in it I think that's the best they can get at this minute in time with the squad they have and you know they can really I think they can kick on next year but I don't think you should be under any pressure at all in the slightest Draw Daz you going for draw as well? I'm going to go for a Bray win You're going on. for a Bray win I'm going to draw I'm going to go, go for a Galway win <laughs> 
<laughs> covered all bases there. We move on to Treaty and UCD <laughs> and Marcus Field. And obviously Treaty finished fourth in the league, UCD third. Uh, I don't think this makes a difference at all because both teams, not much between them. But contrast and styles, I suppose, Keane, in many ways. And, uh, you know, Treaty have done unbelievably well to even get to this point. But they're going to be up for this game big time. UCD, we know, have got lovely footballers. You know, Ke- uh, Kerrigan Keeney, you've got... Um, you know, wheeling up front and that Sam Todd keeps them as tight as he possibly can at the back as well with the way they play. Uh, Trishi, McSweeney's their top scorer with six goals this season, so it kind of tells you their goals are more or less shared and they're quite dogged uh, the way they play and their approach to make it very difficult. Um, they'll test UCD's patience to the limit, I think, in this one, won't they? Yeah, no doubt they will. Uh, I, I think it'll be... They will have to go and play at some stage in this in this toy, I think it, the, this game on Wednesday night is going to be the one that they're going to have to kind of half take the game to UCD a little bit. I know it's going to be cautious, but you know they're going to half take it to them. Or oh, UCD, you can exploit them very easily. Uh, I watched UCD. I, I honestly, I knew we were coming out to chat about this. I watched UCD's last yeah. three games, uh, and I've seen them all season. Really, I've seen every game they played nearly, apart from probably one or two only. And you know they, you can hoard them. They, they are literally they're so attack minded. Mm. Like you just need to have clever players, which I think three you have, and you can hoard them. You really can. And it's it doesn't take a genius to figure that out. It doesn't take a genius to look at the games and have a look of where where they can hoard them and their weaknesses. Obviously, they have fantastic strengths as well. Mm. But you know, in these in these games, you need to be looking at their weaknesses and. You know, you need to suss them out a little bit. Obviously, they've played each other. They know what each other is about already. Uh, UCD know they're in for the game. They know they're probably in for a tough one where they're going to have to try and break the lines and get get in behind, which is going to be very hard to do. If they get in behind, probably twice a person, I, I would recommend, I would say that they're going to have one goal at least if they get in behind twice in the game. Uh, they have that quality. But, you know, at the same time, Treaty, like I said, can hurt you. On the counter, they're very devastating, and you know they can they can get a goal, and you can't see them being mauled uh, in a game. Like you can't see them being three or four goals down. I I, I think it's going the both games, uh, f- probably the four games over the over the playoff, uh, first first uh, first rounds are going to be really tight. I would say, and I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm look, I'm looking forward to watching this game. Obviously, I'm going to the Carlisle on Wednesday. But I'm looking forward to seeing this game back and, you know, just seeing, seeing those, you know, do UCD kind of sit in a little bit? I know it's against the principles or whatever it might be, but can they sit in and just, you know, in, in, in games like this, I know they're attack-minded and they're fantastic at that. But, you know, this is a big game. Uh, can you sacrifice it, you know, and, and get yourself back to, back to the bowl on Sunday and, you know, then you're going to give them a right goal. But I, I think it's going to be a lot more open than people think because Treaty can't afford to sit back. You know, you're at home. You have to go to the bowl and play them as well. So, you know, I, I think it's going to be a little more, bit more open than people think. And I don't think people are giving Treaty the credit they deserve either. Uh, you know, everyone says that dog it, that this, that, that they can play as well. They, they're really good. Uh Goals dotted right around the team, and you know that that's that's dangerous. I'd, I'd rather play a team like UCD that you know who the target men are and the danger men are. You know, in treaty, literally one to ten outfield players can actually put the ball in the back of the net. In my opinion, and uh, you know, I'd rather worry about Whelan and maybe Kerrigan or in the attacking areas than you know you don't know who's going to pop up with a goal for them. So. Oh, I'm gonna go for a treaty win. I think they'll. Uh, I don't know if they'll win the toy now, but I think they'll win Wednesday night. Yeah, I'm actually gonna go for a treaty win as well. I just everything you said, they're basically spot on. But does I mean? Yeah, I think Treaty as well. They're one of those teams that are very, very good off the ball. Uh, they can sit back, but they can also harass and harry. And uh, they identify good players like UCD have, and they don't give them time on the ball. Um, whereas UCD. I think, as Keane says, to play free flow and football, etc. But my question for UCD is, I think you have to grind a little bit at some point in the playoffs if you're going to get through. Uh, can they do it? Maybe they can, but um, 
I know Treaty can definitely do that. And as Keane says, like they can hit you and they can uh, take advantage and exploit weaknesses in that UCD yeah. uh, team as well. And it's not even like the UCD backline is bad. It's just the way they play. It's the setup and the way they play. Like, you know, everything's compressed. Um, you know, they play high generally, like, you know, uh, it's going to be an interesting one, this one. But as I said, yeah. I'm veering the side of Treaty. will win the match anyway. I actually, <clears throat> I know what Keanu said about will UCD actually sit in a little bit and play a little bit differently, but I don't think they will. I think they're going to stick to the principles of what they're good at. And I think they're going to try and play how they know and what they're good at and take the game to Treaty and try and get the win away from home. UCD attacked really, really well. They've conceded a few goals this season, obviously, you know, who wants to put it? Like any game, they all do it, but a lot of their goals that you see that was from overloads going forward, I think, as well, and being caught in the counter. I think Treaty, you know, can excel on that. I think Treaty will be the one that can sit back because I said it a few times, I've seen him play a few matches, organisation that they're terrific at. So sometimes go 4 4 2 in the match to so change it around and have two banks of four and they play really, really well that way. As Give the manager a lot of credit for that, though, don't you? Absolutely. Like I've said it, you know, a good few times in the show, like Bar deserves tremendous you know, praise for this. Like, how did he get? this new team set up in coronavirus with no fans until a playoffs. Like this should be talked about for many years to come. Like what he's done is absolutely amazing. But I do think Treaty have a better chance in this, despite UCD probably playing a better football. But I think you know Treaty are good at what they do, as in being units, being organized and if one player presses the other one comes in and covers, they're not really exploited that way. The clever hard to think and the decision making is always really good. I don't really think they can see too many silly goals. Whereas UCD are a lot younger, the players aren't probably as clever and not as experienced. And I think they can get too excited at times and get forward. They might score three goals in the match, but concede four because they're playing so well going forward. But sometimes at the back, I think they can be a little bit exposed and left open. As well as that, they kind of press from the front a lot. Like the two strikers will press and try and force a play one way. I think that can make your wingers turn in the and try and defend the other, the other wingers coming at them. And if they play with a high line, then they could get cut out from a ball over the top, which three are known to do as well. Mm. So I really, in mm. myself, you know, I think looking at it from that kind of a technical perspective, mm. I would fancy three E for it, but you cannot rule out UCD. They, they play it tremendous. If they get the goal up and then play like how Keno said, go against the Prince Percent a little bit, try and sit back to kind of hold on to the one win. And like you said, be a bit doggy and try and see a one nil out. I think they could try and do that as well, but I certainly don't see UCD. It myself personally changing how we play if they do it'd be very interesting to see what to do but I just don't think they will yeah I'd probably go along with that as well but can be interesting because I think there's going to be a massive crowd at Marcus Field as well like and Marcus Field's one of those grounds isn't it that it can be a bit of a carnival atmosphere if you can get a good crowd in isn't it yeah look I've seen a forced hand down there especially in the late cup and stuff like that a couple of years ago uh, when when they were when it was Limerick, but uh, yeah. you know they they do come out and they they do come out in numbers when the team is doing well, and you know I think the Limerick supporters, uh, oh, sorry treaty now, but I think that you know that they're, they're very they're, they're Limerick people most of them, so they'll get you'll get away with that. <laughs> yeah, it's basically yeah. all the Limerick fans are. Uh, yeah, all the Limerick fans are up there now, the Blue Army and stuff like that, and you know I think they're. You know, they, they've been, they haven't been lucky at all down there supporting that club. You know, the, you know, you have a couple of Limerick sides and, you know, got the money issues and the troubles. And, you know, I think then there was a sense of excitement when Mark Fields came and, you know, they, they done so well in the first division that year. They probably shouldn't have been relegated. Uh, I remember that Martin Russell came in and they were... It, it was crazy. It was like, I think it, it was, they got unbelievable amount of points and just, yeah. be, they got pipped right at the very end. So it'd be, it'd be like, uh, similar to what Mark Bertram was after doing now at Waterford. But I, I just think, I think the Limerick one was much better performances. And I think the league had a lot more, like you had Dundalk, you had Pats who were strong, you had Rovers who probably weren't as strong as they should have been. And, you know, so I think the league, you had Sligo back then as well, who are decent. So, you know, I think it was, that that was a big thing for them. And then, you know, they got themselves to the league cup final and they played Pats and Mark of Fields. And, you know, there was a real sense that these are the up and coming. These can go and do something. And unfortunately, you know, money issues and stuff like that, they kind of 
they had a fantastic side there with Chidaldi, yeah. Odd Bene, they had uh, Billy Dennehy, they had uh, Aaron Green, you know, Bastian Hurley, uh, Brendan Clark, you know, they had some fantastic, fantastic players, Rodrigo Tossi, uh, who I thought was really good up front. Not bad uh, names, are they? <laughs> you no, know, some really good side, and you know, then all of a sudden, kind of, Russell left and the shit kind of hit the fan a little bit for them and mm. they got rid of Russell because they weren't happy with how they were playing and you know then all of a sudden they went through all this money issues and stuff like that and they were gone so this is now to come back and support Treaty and you know really have a bit of pride about the place I think Treaty is that, like have said, a base there, Kane, as well. Like, there's a youth development base, obviously, as exactly. well. So it's been done um, the right way, and yeah, yeah. So I think it's, I, I think it's exciting for them. There's going to be a fantastic atmosphere there uh, Wednesday night. I hope they come out in numbers. Look, I said I'll be at the Carlisle. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping it's not going to be a growl of a game, but I'll be at the Carlisle, and you know, I'll be, I'll, I'll be hoping for a decent game because I'll, I'll watch it on the way back. Cause it's a long bus journey back, and. Uh, Sometimes the bus journey to the Carlisle and back is probably better than the game. So I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. Bring, bring a few whiskeys. Bring a few whiskeys. It'll be fine, Gino. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to go for three. I think three might even edge the toy. Mm-hmm. Possibly, yeah. I'll go for three to win the game anyway. I'm not sure about the toy. We'll have to see how the first leg goes anyway. So <laughs> thanks, guys, for coming on. That was great. Good stuff. Thanks, guys, for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Hit your bell notification button. And let us know what you think in the comments. Give us a prediction. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah.